Dan Crenshaw at the time said that he was on the side of the rioters, that the president was on the side of the rioters. Uh Uh-oh. That's what he said. And now, because of that, his own vice president, his own chief of staff, all these people can't support him again because they don't know what he's going to do because he's so erratic, because he's of such low character. Donald Trump sat in the dining room of the White House and watched his supporters brutalize over a hundred Capitol Police officers. Trump was watching it, man. I'm, I get so f- pissed when I think about that. What is not good for the economy is instability. And Donald Trump is an absolute wreck of a human. It's okay that he's made up about Haitians eating cats because a woman got murdered. What, what, the, what is this logic? Are these people so stupid? Friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, hit like, comment, subscribe. It really helps us out, and I appreciate everybody who does that. Um, This is an old clip, but it's from about eight days ago, but I haven't seen it, and apparently it's really good. It's Tim Miller from The Bulwark having an argument with... um, And he's actually like, I really like this guy. Tim Miller, to me, is, is like really good on camera. He's super sharp, really good conversationalist. He has done... I just feel like he's just done such a great job in the last like year. I don't know if it's that if he was always this good, but I feel like he's gotten a lot better better in the last like year. I feel like he's really come into his own in the last year. His conversation with Carrie Lake, for example, was just like, he's so good at skewering Republicans. He's, he is, he is one of the more ruthless people in the space. He just, he doesn't do any kind of like fake nice stuff. He's just openly hostile, you know, but he's, he's real good. So anyways, yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen this. I have not seen it yet, but apparently it's really good. Dan, you're not at all alarmed that the last the thing administration that me ended with people storming the Capitol. Kamala Harris, she doesn't instill in me a sense of being a natural commander in chief. That feels like something that for you and your therapist, I think, Piers. Would it not have been better for the Democrats when it was clear Biden couldn't continue and the knives came out for him? Would it not have been better for the Democrats to have had an internal battle to choose their nominee rather than No. What do you what do you what do you mean? How could you look at how could you look at Kamala's campaign for the last um, when did she take over late July, August, September for the last two and a half months? How could you look at her campaign record fundraising like record t- t- two days in a row of record fundraising? She's raised over a billion dollars. She's raised over a billion dollars in two and a half months. She turned a losing campaign into a slightly winning campaign or maybe just you know a competitive campaign if you will and you think it would have been better to do like a mini primary with like gretchen whitmer versus pete versus gavin versus kamala no than just crown kamala harris and hope for the best the results speak for themselves yeah, I mean, maybe peers uh, you know i was pushing for joe biden to get out of the race because of his age not because of his policies long before that and um unfortunately it came too late and he ended up with uh you know kind of at a moment where there really wasn't time to do that and his vice president has stepped up uh, as you pointed out uh, his vice president kamala harris crushed donald trump in that debate absolutely annihilated her so if her policies and if her rhetoric is that weak and if she's low iq Like Donald Trump said, it's unclear why he was unable to make a single coherent argument against her that was not word salad. And and frankly, I also just disagree with the congressman when it comes to the policies. I mean, I think that the Biden administration has had some policies that are too liberal for me. But much of what they passed has been bipartisan, including the infrastructure bill, including the CHIPS Act. Uh, The economy is coming in for a soft landing. The American economy is the envy of the world. And um, I think Kamala Harris has put out a pretty detailed economic policy that's far superior to Donald Trump's. What Donald Trump has put forth for his economic policy is a 20 percent across the board tariff, which I know Dan Crenshaw cannot possibly support. And just a budget busting $5 trillion more added to our deficit. That's Donald Trump's policies. So I, I think when it comes to rhetoric, preparation and policy, she's superior. Well, my issue with Kamala Harris is not that she's not intelligent. She obviously is. She's done extremely well with her life as a lawyer, senator and so on. It's not that she you know, isn't personable. And it's not that I don't share her vision that we'd all love to f- feel more joyful. YouTube chat. My dad is a lifelong Republican, but he saw Trump for what he was and told me the day Trump won in 2016, the Constitution was going to be pushed to the limits. He was spot on. Based MAGA dad. Is he voting for Kamala this year? It's how are we going to get to this utopia? And she has single handedly throughout all of these exchanges declined or doesn't know 
how we're going to get to utopia. Does that not concern you? Yeah, no, because we're not getting to utopia. We need somebody to run and manage the government, okay, Piers? And, and so on this question of how she's going to pay for her plans, there isn't a good answer, so she didn't give one. I agree with that. I'm a fiscal conservative. I wish that they would be balancing the budget. But here's the thing. She's running against Donald Trump, whose answer to that question is even more incoherent. Uh, despite Dan's attempt at a history lesson over there, what Donald Trump said was how he was going to pay for his plans was that he was going to tariff China, and we we're going to use the tariff money as if it's like a government fee, like, that, like we're getting this fee, and that we're, he's going to pay for free health care. He's going to pay for child care. He's going to pay for everything with these magical tariffs. Like He has no coherent answer on this. And, and, and here's the other thing. What is not good for the economy is instability. And, and Donald Trump is an absolute wreck of a human. We have we have no idea Accurate, what he would true. do in a second term. And he left when he left office. There was a mob of people storming the Capitol, trying to attack Congressman Crenshaw. That's what was happening. They were waving his flag. Yep. They were storming so the Capitol. Is, they were trying to keep him power. Strange, I'm sorry. Just let me finish this. Let me finish this. Strange thing to say. This is, let me finish this. No, I'm sorry. This is what happened at the end of his of his. This, bro, this is what I say, I mean when I say he's a bulldog. He's a f Bulldog, man. And even his own supporters were like, we are concerned that he can't stay in another 14 days. They talked about the 25th Amendment. Dan Crenshaw at the time said that he was on the side of the rioters, that the president was on the side of the rioters. Uh -oh. That's what he said. And now because <sighs> of that, his own vice president, his own chief of staff, it's not me, it's not somebody that is obsessed with Trump, his own Department of uh, uh, Transportation, uh, Secretary of Defense, all of these people can't support him again because they don't know what he's going to do because he's so erratic, because he's of such low character. We can't put somebody Oof. like that in. That is dangerous for the country, uh, for our all democracy, right, right. You, but you've also made the for point, the economy. But we, to, but, but we have to go back to what you said. You've got to go back to what you said about the economy and not knowing what he's going to okay. do. Oof. That's nonsense. You, you know exactly I understand what he's you don't want to talk about January. He led the country for four I years. You don't want to talk about it. She can't even argue. <laughs> I love this guy, man. Like, listen, I you know I disagree with fiscal conservatism, but but he is so good in this kind of a format. Articulate what she's even talking about. And nobody knows what her economic policy is based on these answers. And, and in the end, it's what, what we actually want is what we got under Donald Trump. I mean, under Donald Trump, you actually had wage growth. And the lowest quintile of earners had 16% wage growth under Biden and Harris. This idea that we didn't have wage growth on Biden's watch is absurd. Chris? Zero percent because wage growth didn't outpace inflation. Inflation was created. Yes, it did. What do you mean? It's been doing that for, he's such a liar it's been doing it for two years now you just been outpacing inflation now for two goddamn years by too much government spending do not take my word for that you can you can look at the fed minutes and their assessment of it under biden administration by the way and what happened was when you add too much money into the economy which is in the form of welfare or in the form of corporate cronyism under the IRA with hundreds of billions of dollars spent that's going to NGOs and nonprofits and venture capitalists that are then going to green renewable energy, what are you gonna get? You're gonna get massive inflation just like we got under Biden and Harris. That's what people are gonna remember. And we can actually associate those outcomes with the policies that they implemented. All right, Tim, surely, Tim, you must recoil a bit when you see the way she responds to those kind of questions. I mean, she literally says nothing. It's no, just, I don't. It's just I, blather. I, I don't. I don't because you, this is the thing. You guys don't want to show Donald Trump's answers because they're even more word salad. It's lies yes. and it's conspiracies and it's dangerous. And, and like, that's why we're not showing his interviews where he's lying about what's happening with Hurricane Helene right now or any of the debate where he, the Kamala mopped the floor with him. I, I, here's the thing. Congressman Crenshaw wants your audience to think that the Republican Party right now is the same as it was in 2017, and that the Donald Trump administration will be the same as it was when he brought in a bunch of traditional Republicans to be around him in his cabinet and to work in his staff. And I'm sorry, that's just an imaginary world that the congressman wants to live in to feel comfortable. Because what the world we live in now is all those people are, no, I'm sorry, Pierce, let me finish, let me finish. All Oof. those people are gone now, and at the RNC at the box, the people around Trump are Matt Gates. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Tucker Carlson. Tucker had a prominent spot to speak at the convention. Congressman Crenshaw did not. This new party is a nativist party that's going to be about mass. Oh my God, he's so surgical. This guy is brutal. God, I love this so far. Deportations and tariffs and revenge on Donald Trump's enemies. If you don't believe me, listen to what Donald Trump says. And I just want to know why Congressman Crenshaw thinks that he understands where the party is better than Trump's own vice president, Mike Pence. 
who assesses this and says, no, this is not someone we can trust. Crenshaw's in a little bit of a difficult spot because at the end of the day, he's subservient to MAGA, but he's not like, he has on occasion publicly rebuked Trump. I feel like he tries to present himself as a moderate, but he just, at the end of the day, he will carry water for Donald Trump, but he still tries to be like somewhat, or uh, I, I should reframe it. He tries to, fr he tries to present himself as somewhat of a, mo a moderate. Um, and so to see someone like Tim Miller use his own track record against him in the way that he's done so far during the, like, you know, saying that um, Tucker Carlson got a speaking, speaking spot instead of him and then using his own quotes against him is, um, uh, to me, it's re really effective. Why does Congressman Crenshaw think that he knows better than Mike Pence about Donald Trump's character and what kind of policies he would put him Dan, against? do you want to respond to that? Yeah. Yeah, so I'll just remind everybody that we're about to vote in November. And on your ballot, it doesn't ask you the question of whether Donald Trump is the same as Jesus Christ. That's not what the question is. The question is, do you prefer Donald Trump or do you prefer Kamala? <laughs> that's one way to like, that's one way to whitewash January 6th. Be like, okay, I'll grant you that he's not Jesus Christ. Harris. And so any reasonable and objective person is going to look at that question and they're going to say, well, okay, well, what things matter to me? Do I want better immigration policy? Do I want my border to actually have law and order around it? Do I want my cities to be safe? Do I want a peace through strength type of foreign policy? Do I want Abraham Accords or do I want October 7th? These guys can't answer you know, this. Do this I want crazy. a better economy with less regulations? Do I want my oil and gas energy industry to be pummeled by regulation after regulation? Or do I want my electricity prices to go back down? That's the question. And it's that's the question that it's people a, are going to be answering. That's a damning non-answer, to borrow mass a phrase. Deport, that's mass a deport, damning non-answer. Mass deportations, a vast majority, a vast majority. That's not a non-answer. I'm the only one actually giving facts It here. is a non-answer. Why the do you know better than Mike Pence? Mass deportation is broadly, is broadly assess... supported by the American people, including Hispanics. Why shouldn't we listen to Donald Trump's vice so president the question and his a chief of staff? Way, then, Tim. Why shouldn't we you listen ask to Mike them? I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not. I'm not here to answer for them. I'm doesn't here to answer it, for me. Doesn't that alarm you? I'm here, to, I'm here to lay this you? out very simply. You don't. You don't feel at all for the American people the, and what the choices are. Dan, Dan, you're not at all alarmed that the last the thing that alarms me is your high pitched storming the Capitol. Voice. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, you lost. You lost, buddy. You got triggered and didn't add hum. Uh oh. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you know what happened. You know what happened after that, because I was I was there. You know what happened after that. A few hours later, we we did our jobs and we got back to business. You know what happened. A few weeks no, later, didn't. Donald Trump moved out of That's... the White House without a word. Oh He's my like... God, bro! Oh my God. Yeah. Shortly after the Civil War, we had peace. Okay. You know what happened after the Civil War, guys? We had peace. All right. We got together as a country and we were one country. Okay. That's the, you know, that's, that's what he's doing here. I mean, it's, it's, it's absurd. It's absurd. He it's didn't true. move out of the white house. Well, no, he well, did. it's okay. not true because so he's for starters, there. you didn't Am go I back. Am I confused or are you confused? Who's shrieking now for, for starters? Uh, it, he didn't, you didn't go back not to me. business. Uh, they, there were votes to overturn the election. And as you said, your colleague yeah. Ted, few Ted hours, Cruz of Texas was later, on the si did. voted yes. on the side of the rioters. And then Donald Trump didn't go to the inauguration for the first time in history. He went home like a petulant child. I, I want to read something that Dan Crenshaw wrote. Here's Dan. Okay, so you're, ma you're mad that he didn't go to the inauguration. That's, that's what it is? He didn't. We didn't have a peaceful transfer of power. He didn't. In every other transition before this, the outgoing president, what are you talking their about? team invites the incoming team in. Okay, so I, I, this wait, is what so, we so, do so, in wait, a normal So democracy. let me just get this straight. Because he didn't sit there, because he didn't sit there in January and watch no, President Biden no, get Dan, No, Dan. No, uh, Dan. Because that's not a peaceful and, transition of power. That is that is such no. an absurd statement to make. But go ahead. Read, okay, Dan. Read what about, I'm, okay, I'm glad you're reading quotes from my book. I appreciate it. Go ahead. Dan, fine. Then how, that's not the sitting there that I care about. How about when he sat there off the Oval Office for hours watching TV while a mob Oof. of people carrying his flag? Oh, this it, this is to me, this is the hardest thing to defend as a Trump person. And it always has been. It just it really got it, 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 it is infuriating to me. Um, my family is law enforcement. I come from a family of cops, okay? I've never been about that ACAB life. I have issues with some cops with the way that they handle themselves. My family are a family of cops. My dad, my sister, my brother-in-law, my uncles, my cousins, like cops all over my family, okay? You're not a f co-op.
Donald Trump sat in the dining room of the White House and watched his supporters brutalize over a hundred Capitol Police officers who are f heroes. Those cops are heroes, straight up. They are the best of us. They are the best of us. They put their bodies on the line to protect democracy. Heroes, man. Every single one of them that fought with those idiot y'all kind of on that day. Those morons. Those absolute 60 IQ troglodyte mouth breathing morons who wanted to throw down with cops. Who wanted to throw down with cops. Every single one of those Capitol Police officers that put their body on the line that day, some of them were permanently mangled, can no longer do the job anymore because they were so brutalized that day. And Trump was watching it, man. I'm, I get so pissed when I think about that. It makes me so angry. That's why I kind of lost composure when I was on the last PKA because they were laughing about it. And it's not funny. It's not funny to me. It is not funny. He watched it happen. It's obvious that he wanted it to happen. He didn't give a about the cops on that at the Capitol that day. He was watching them get brutalized. He watched them get brutalized for three hours. So how is Crenshaw going to defend this? This is, to me, this is the most difficult thing if you're a Trump sycophant. This is the most difficult thing to, to, to defend. How do, you def how do you defend that? How can you defend that? Attack police officers and storm the Capitol. The President of the United States was not on the side of the Capitol Police. He sat there and watched his DVR and he ate his well-done hamburgers and did nothing. He did nothing for the Capitol Police that stood there because he was rooting for them to lose. That is not a peaceful transfer of power. That is the Donald Trump's behavior that is unacceptable. Perfect. And honestly, if anybody else in American public life Give it to him. And, and was running against him, I would be for them, including you, including Nikki Haley, who I voted for, including almost all of the elected okay. Democrats. All right, listen. That was unacceptable behavior, Dan. That was unacceptable okay. behavior. Do you think Many people Let him respond to that. No, don't save him, Piers. Do not bail him out. He needs to answer this question. This sycophant, this wannabe moderate, this wannabe maverick, this wannabe John McCain, he needs to answer this question. I would agree with, I, I thought that was unacceptable behavior, but let's move forward. No, Tim, don't let him skate. Don't let, press him, Tim. Would you, Congressman? That's what, uh, Congressman, I, I, was that unacceptable I've, behavior I've, for I've, you? I've, I, I, I don't need to answer these questions again. I, I did an entire podcast calling it, uh, calling it what it was. I did, yeah. I, at the moment, I was calling it what it was. I, I want to move. What? Anyway, this Tim, is, I want to move to where we are. Calling it what? What did you call it? What did you call it? And what's changed since then? What did you call it? it? Talk oh. to somebody else if you want to get Let's move to where we are. I do not trust the Donald Trump administration that did child separations. It has going to have Stephen Miller in charge of the... Oh, my God. I can't believe you let him skate there, man. What the f***? <sighs> Obama regime. separated people... Kids and, I, kids and families. Uh, yeah, to do a mass deportation. And another good reason not to trust them is you're doing this performative thing where I'm a little bit upset about how Kamala's exaggerating on this or that. But like Donald Trump is making up just flat out lies, inhuman lies about people that are in this country illegally and planning to deport them, saying he will deport like the Haitian migrants who have legal status here in this country. He went on a national TV stage and said that there are stealing pets from their neighbors and eating them like this is so mean and so inhumane the, think well, about I a thought, I, no, kid for, 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 for the record i thought that was completely wrong and i think it backfired right. it backfired but, but, so, hideously so, I mean, for him yeah but, but the bigger how picture you, yeah, but it, it comes to how can you trust a person can i just say one last thing yeah. i just don't yeah, how can so, you trust so, a person like this how can you trust a person whose character is like this, who will lie, who will tell you that he won when he lost, who will tell you that people here, here legally are, are eating pet animals and stealing them, who will tell you that we're, we're not helping people. Who so, okay, someone in my YouTube chat just wrote, Crenshaw spits facts. Uh, I, I am so triggered by that. Listen, we're trying to build up a YouTube audience, but I'm, I'm, you are never speaking in my chat ever again. What, what, what fact or what are you talking about? I take it all back. Uh, Twitch is better. Twitch, I love you guys. The YouTube chat. Who are suffering from Hurricane Helene. Like, he is a bad person okay. that lies okay. and tells cruel and inhumane lies. Let me go to that. All the, the time. The, the, How do you defend that The bad orange, that type the bad of orange man argument. The bad, bad, or response. The, the, the bad orange. The bad orange man. He's giving you specific grievances. He just made up bullshit 
about the federal response to the government, these Haitians that were in Ohio. He just made it up. And he, oh yeah, bad man orange, bad man orange. Yeah, Dan, he's it. bad. You so, know who so, said he was it, bad? It, it, you so might, so, you so, said so that he, he was got, an insane so idiot. That's an answer. In like, like, it's like literally 2015. So, and and he might have gotten the cats and dogs wrong, but you know what's not wrong? Um, Lake and Riley. That's that's not a fake story. Oh my god. Okay, here in Houston, Jocelyn Nungry. That's not a fake. It's okay that he's made up shit about Haitians eating cats because a woman got murdered. What what the what is this logic? Why are these people so stupid? Fake story. These are people who shouldn't have gotten into the country in the first place and then committed horrible there are tens of thousands of more crimes that have been committed and people are understandably upset about those crimes why because Thanks. you've already committed a crime before you committed that crime you came in illegally and you came in illegally because right. this administration undid every executive order that trump had in place to try and fix the problem and they created a massive massive new problem and you say we can't trust trump like Mazen, what's well, up, buddy? Again, that's that's an emotional argument because all we have to it's do. It's not an emotional argument. It's not an emotional argument. What do you mean it's an emo? He gave you a specific grievance. It should be disqualifying. If a presidential candidate goes on the stump and starts lying about the federal government's response to a hurricane, do you understand? That if Trump gets up there and lies, and then he's got a supporter that lives in North Carolina, Georgia who was affected by that hurricane, who maybe isn't plugged into the news. They have no idea what programs they qualify for from FEMA. FEMA goes well beyond the $750 stipend that they get in the first three days. There's so many programs that you can apply for to get relief, to make sure that you get shelter, to make sure you get food, to make sure you get access to healthcare and medicine during, and if, and if you have a Trump supporter who only watches Trump for the news and Trump's out here saying the federal government isn't doing anything when they are, there could be serious consequences there. There's a real impact to that abject shameless dishonesty there could be a con that person has no idea that they can they have so much relief that they can get from the federal government if they reach out to this agency or that agency go to this website and fill out this application during an emergency you should be educating the people that are impacted by this devastating hurricane you should be educating. You should put the partisan politics aside and you should be educating your supporters on where they can go for relief instead of lying. He just made it up. This idea that Joe Biden was ignoring and the federal government was ignoring people that were impacted by this hurricane is utterly disqualifying. This is not an emotional argument. No, it was isn't. At the history of his no, policies, it isn't, his executive orders. No, stop interrupting me. It is an emotional argument because an objective argument would be, okay, what is, he, what is somebody gonna do? Well, they already had the job once. So I have a feeling that they're probably gonna do the same policies that got the border under control the first time. Watch, have you seen Red Bar's allegations about you? I'm a fan, but I hope this stuff isn't true. Very concerning. What the f who's Red Bar? I don't know who this I'm, is. And they're gonna immediately- That's an emotional someone in chat. Those argument. policies that got the border under control. How is that an that's emotional, emotional you're argument? You're making an emotional argument. That's an objective argument based on history. That's based you know, on you're history. You're saying I have a feeling. This is this is like saying, all right, man, I, I got hammered at the bar and I and I drove 90 miles an hour down the highway and I spun out and we circled around and I landed straight. And that means I should just get hammered and drive again because the, because last time we barely survived with only analogy. a little insurrection. We analogy. had a mild no. insurrection. The, the, we had a mild the, insurrection. The, Look, Dan, listen, character I'll, matters. I'll, I'll, you know I'll, that. I'll help you out. Dan, I'll help Dan, you out with your metaphors, about this. okay? Character matters. <laughs> it does. I'll, I'll, In a leader, you character matters. Here. You cannot lie about people. You cannot advance racist lies. And you cannot tell people that our elections are fraudulent when they're real. You cannot tell people that that they're that they're eating pets, that the government doesn't care about you, that the that the country's going to end. All of these lies that he tells, that that affects the country, so man. Okay, so like your your, your argument is people. that you 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 do not you do not like his character. Right? You've made that very clear. But again, it's, not, it's objective. The, 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 point the choice about on the ballot about these is, lies. is it's not about is, me. Is, that, 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 that's fine, but, it, but, but, but then another objective point would be what our choice is in this election. And the choice is yeah, not a question, a yes or no question on whether you think Trump has a perfect character. That's not the question on the ballot. 
The question on the ballot is about who will do a better job running the country for the next four years. And this is a really interesting case where we actually have four years from each candidate yeah. where we know exactly what their policies are going to be and I what agree. their outcomes are going to be. And on every metric, Trump wins on those metrics. You may still not well, like no, his character. No. And I'm not going to no, try to no, convince no, no, you. No, 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 that's not right, though. Name one where That's he not doesn't. Right. The metrics only the metrics only count for him if you stop the metrics before COVID happens because COVID wasn't his fault. I actually agree with this. I don't blame Trump for COVID, but but you can't say that all of the job loss that happened, the huge spike in crime that happened in 2020 while Trump was president, you cannot say that that was not his fault because of COVID. But then everything that happened in 2021 on everything, the COVID had nothing to do with any of that. That That's all Biden's policies. Look, we had this huge disruption that happened under Trump. And well, if you actually of, of just look at I the can. metrics. No, 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 of course no, no, I you can. You want to say because, metrics. Because if you I look can, at just the metrics I can look of at crime and jobs, passed. it's better under right. Biden. Sorry, that's just facts. Those let are metrics. Tell, that, 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 right, was, that, that was me, debunked in the last debate. It's not debunked. It's not debunked. It's not debunked. Not debunked. The, cr the crime levels were, were better under Biden. The crime levels uh, in terms of like how much they've gone down on trend, uh, the sustained unemployment, the job creation, the the amount of manufacturing jobs, like stock market um, record breaking highs. Like what 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 me what metrics do you want to focus on? That they had on this, let, let me like, switch on the to, crime issue. And look, and, and, and you know this very well. Like you know that across the country, crime is spiking because Ralph Carter. Thanks, uh, thanks so much, buddy. Left wing no, district attorneys going down. and left wing judges are crime's letting are letting criminals out on one dollar bonds and they go back and murder. Okay, that what do you, what do you mean crime is going down? That was debunked. About that, that was a claim that was made by CBS during the during the during the during the election. It's a claim that was made by the FBI. They've since revised their numbers. I need to look into more fact checks about this because I'm not going to take conservatives at their word, to be honest. Yeah, let's talk about 2020. Was that a bunch of Republicans out there causing two billion dollars in damage? Was that a bunch of Republican riots? It was a bunch of anarchist opportunist tankies that's what that was we disavow you think those were like reliable democratic voters that were rioting in 2020 that was like median democratic voter those people believe in nothing they're nihilists no, no but in, it wasn't a bunch of biden cities. supporters no of course how much do you hate tankies bro i'm almost at a point where i hate them more than maga i i almost 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 i'm almost there i still say that maga edges out i still say that maga edges out but uh but tankies are not far behind i i hate them i f love them uh so you're against the blm protest now spooky you're starting to piss me off buddy you've been saying some dumb sh spooky i'm gonna listen we're gonna have a trial we're gonna have a trial right now okay i'm gonna leave it to chat your fate is in their hands okay unless Unless you acknowledge to me right now that nothing I said implied that I was against the BLM protests, unless you're willing to admit that, then they will decide if you get a week-long ban or not. But I want you to, to acknowledge right now, I never said anything indicating that the BLM protests were bad. Answer it yourself, okay? I'm gonna give you an opportunity, man. I'm giving you an opportunity right now. You can simply acknowledge that I never said anything indicating that BLM protests were bad. You can acknowledge that, or the chat will decide if you get a week-long ban. Everybody makes mistakes. I don't think this was a mistake. I think you're being bad faith. But we can own these things, and I'm giving you an opportunity to own it, okay? You are purposefully misconstruing my words. So you meant the looting or whatever? Answer your own question. Don't ask me the question. You heard what I said. You're dancing around it. Just say it. Just say it. You didn't say that you were against the protests. You said you were against the rioters. Just say that affirmatively. I'm giving you one more chance, okay? So the next thing you type better be the thing, okay? Crenshaw and other right-wingers like to paint the PLM protests as a sum. Okay. Um, I don't know how to do a week-long ban. I gave you an opportunity. I'm, I'm going to do a 24-hour ban just seven days in a row. If you show up in chat tomorrow, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it for seven days. It's such bullshit, bro. Just own it. You, you were blatantly bad faith misconstruing what I said. I never said I, I was at a BLM protest. I went. I marched for three hours. My feet hurt. I wore the wrong shoes. And boy, did my feet hurt. Bro, let me tell you a story about that. Let me tell you about, let me, t let me tell you a story about that, okay? I went to a BLM protest, right? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, this is righteous. I'm glad I'm here. Yeah. 
and we all collected at this one intersection in West Hollywood. And, and somebody gets on a microphone and, and listen, the, the context here is it's a hot day. It's a hot day in like July or August, okay? It's a hot, hot, okay? The pavement is hot. And the guy gets on the microphone and he's like, we're all gonna lay down on I'm our- I'm not gonna get stun locked by you people anymore. We're all gonna lay down on our stomachs and put our hands behind our back in solidarity with George Floyd. And we're gonna, and, and we're gonna lay down for nine minutes. And I was like, are you f And I know I wasn't the only one that was thinking like, mm, is this really necessary? But I did it, because I'm not gonna be the only one not doing it. And so 700 people were all laying down and the pavement is so hot. And I have to like, I have to like switch my head, switch, switch sides like every 30 seconds because it's literally burning my face. I'm like, and I'm in my head thinking like, bro, this is so stupid. Like, God, can we just f march? Like, this is just, this has got to be a health hazard, you know? I didn't, because I'm not going to be the guy that's like, hey, you guys have fun with that. I'll just be over here. That sh man. Do it or you're literally Derek Chauvin. You're no better than Derek Chauvin if you don't f lay down on a 150 degree asphalt. I know I wasn't the only one too because I looked around and some other people had that look on their face too like like I looked around and there were some people that were like and then one person did it and then th 10 people did it and 30 people did it and it's like oh okay. all right it's Christ of course not was, 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 that's what it was it was a Larry David moment that's exactly what it was <laughs> That's exactly what it was. That was a perfect Larry David moment right there. He would have done the same thing, I think. Um, MK15, what's up, buddy? Was, was Trump trying to, was Trump asking governors to put the National Guard in to stop it? Yes, of course he was. All right, was, was governors like Tim Walls preventing that from happening and Why allowing Minneapolis that? to be burned down? Of course he was. Why didn't he do that in DC? I, look, again, I agree. The, the rioting was bad during 2020. The people that were rioting weren't waving Kamala Harris flags, okay? They were Antifa. They were, they were saying they're the same people that say genocide Joe. These are not the, this is not the Democratic establishment. There were Trump flags over the Capitol as cops were getting attacked. Trump flags over the Capitol as cops were getting attacked. I, I, that was Donald Trump's fault. Okay. He sat yeah, there. You sat there. Hang on, hang on. We've got to deal with that. We've already, we've already done general things. Well, with Kamala Harris, she doesn't instill in me, and I'm sure she wouldn't in you, a sense of being a natural commander in chief, does she? It I, I feels like something that for you and your therapist, I think, Piers, because she. Dude, Tim Miller, man, he's, he's the guy. He's on the list of good guys, man. He's he is he is too good at this, man. He's like I I aspire to be like this. I wish I was this sharp, bro. He's good. She does uh, seem like that to me. I mean, she was in full command again in a debate with Donald Trump. He had plenty of opportunities to demonstrate why she would not be strong on the national stage and national security, and um, he didn't do it. And if you just listen to our allies, um, many of them certainly in private conversations. Uh, would feel much more comfortable with Kamala Harris and her experience going to the Munich Security Conference and, and elsewhere. So, uh, look, again, uh, Tucker Carlson, who uh, this is a person that me and Dan agree on, um, does, does not have smart foreign policy. He was influential in picking Trump's VP. Uh, he's going to be influential in who is around Trump. Trump's national security team from the first term that Dan keeps praising don't support him. His secretary of defense, his national security advisor, his former general chief of staff, his chairman of the joint chiefs, none of them support him. So I, I think it could be a very different second term uh, when it comes to Donald Trump. And then you just look at his behavior when he's been on his own. We have the Woodward book uh, where we've learned this week that he's had maybe up to seven private one-on-one -on -one conversations with Putin during this period where Pretty Putin wild. invaded a democratic ally. That is deeply alarming. He was sending Putin back channel COVID tests, apparently. I, I just I think that the risk here is very high. I understand. I kind of agree with Dan that I thought his foreign policy was pretty good the first couple of years. But the people that were executing that plan are not coming back. There's going to be a new group of more nationalist, more isolationist people. That, and Trump says this himself. He says, I, I know who the MAGA people are now. 
So I would be deeply alarmed about a second term, and I'm deeply alarmed about the, his relationship with Putin that has been reported between 2021 I mean, and 2024. I mean, all of his say about his relationship. And I was deeply alarmed. Finally, speaking just on a public thing, even if you don't buy the Woodward, he stood next to Zelensky and talked about how great his relationship with Putin was. I, I, I just think across the board, um, I, 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 it I'd should be, be noted, though, Tim, that. That, that Putin didn't pull any stunts under under Trump. He only pulled them when Trump was out of office. And I do think there's, I do think there's. Right. Something about Trump's way with dealing with these uh, leaders of Russia just, and China and North Korea, which is oddly quite effective. I do. I think um, that's kind none of, of them pulled any stunts on his watch. I mean, it may be coincidence, I just but they didn't. Yeah, the, yeah the, it's the, kind the of reality is the, the outcome world. It's kind of like, it's kind of like under, saying under, that 9-11 happened because... Trump would lose Afghanistan. Under, sorry, uh, Dan. Well, yeah, I mean, it is, it, again, we're, we're just we're just engaging in guesswork here when all we have to do is look at four years of history. Dan Lasso's debate, Destiny's a girl's name. You say all these people are gone, but they're not gone. Mike Pompeo is not gone. They're not supporting him. Uh, again, Robert O'Brien is not gone. Uh, yes, they are. Uh, uh, did you hear not the name they just said? Not they absolutely are. There's a high, li a high, high likelihood they'll be in the Neither of his national security Chattel advisors are supporting him, Dan. Dan, neither of his yeah, national look, you, security you, you advisors, can have a neither John Bolton you, you, you nor H.R. McMaster Robert O'Brien. Robert O'Brien is definitely supporting Trump. I think you're confused on that. Okay, uh, let's, move, okay. let's, let's move, move on. on. And Robert O'Brien sees, sees Let me move on. I want, move on. I want to move on to right, somebody. Yeah, you're, 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 you're engaging in total guesswork. You're let's engaging move. in total guesswork. Guesswork? What? To point out that two national security advisors don't support him now, that's guesswork? Guesswork, and let, all I have to do is compare four years to four years and show people what that looks like. Let me move on to Who's Elon. Argument stronger. Want to move on to? I did this because Congressman has kept coming back to this. If you don't mind, I'd just like to say very briefly that that he keeps that he ended the last answer by saying that his argument is stronger because if you just look at the four years, and again, I, I do just need to remind us that that kind of just assumes as acts as if 2020 didn't happen because Donald Trump left the White House in 2020 with record unemployment with crime skyrocketing, and with blood of police officers on our Capitol. That's how he left and went back to Mar-a-Lago. That's how he left. So I think if you just objectively look at those four years, I think you can see why his character flaws and his policy failures, really, but mostly why his character flaws led to bad outcomes. And, and I got cut off earlier, but Dan wrote this in his book. He wrote that a culture characterized by self-pity, indulgence, outrage, and resentment Oof. is a culture that falls apart. These are the de these are the defining feature. <clears throat> Excuse me. These are the defining features of MAGA. Listen to those. Listen to that again. He just laid out the defining features of MAGA: grievance, anger, self pity. B dog. Thank you so much for the tier one membership, buddy. Led to bad outcomes, and and I got cut off earlier, but Dan wrote this in his book. He wrote that a culture characterized by self pity, indulgence, outrage, and resentment is a culture that falls apart. And I think that's true about a, cult, a country and a party, that if you're led by someone that is full of self-pity, indulgence, outrage, and resentment, that describes Donald Trump better than anybody, yes. anything I've ever heard, actually. Yes. Um, and Dan knows this. Like, Dan is not, like, he's bad, but he's not, like, I wouldn't put him in the same camp as, like, Mike Johnson. I wouldn't put him in the same camp as, um, like, Louis Gohmert or Boebert or Marjorie Taylor Greene or Gates or... Um, uh, Chip Roy, like he's bad, but there's a spectrum of bad re with Republicans, and he knows this. He knows everything that Tim is saying right now is true. He knows deep down, and he has to stuff it down. Because if you want a political career in the Republican Party right now, you have to just white knuckle until Trump is no longer the leader of the party. You just have to. Otherwise, you are dead in the water. You do not have a career anymore. You will be pushed out of the party. You will, you will no longer work in DC. You will no longer have any political power. And some people had principles, you know, Republicans that I disagree with fundamentally on policy, Kinzinger, Cheney, Romney, some of them at least had a spine. Some of them at least had a spine. He does not, and he, he just knows. He knows what he's saying is correct, and he has to stuff it down and just assume the position of a propagandist. I think that is going to lead to a country that falls apart. I think we saw that with the chaos surrounding the election and COVID as Trump left office, and I think that we would see a similar chaos again if we put him back in. And you mentioned my book. Look, that, that, that thing that I'm worried about, the pity and the, the self-indulgence and the, and the sense of resentment, yeah, that's true across all populist movements. The left is the definition of a populist movement, because what do I mean by that? 
telling people what they want to hear instead of the truth. And that's the Democrat way. Hey, something else is your fault. Somebody else is at fault. Maybe it's because they're a different gender what or a different you? skin color, but they're at fault for your problems. You're not at fault. Don for Donald Trump, he spends all of his time blaming all of society's problems on immigrants, on trans people, on Democrats, on people he calls radical Marxists and communists. That's Trump's entire MO. There, there are populists on the left, like Bernie's a bit of a populist, obviously, on the left, but there is no left-wing equivalent to the kind of populism that we see from Donald Trump. He's, he's describing how Trump works fundamentally. For your problems. So here, here's a free check. Just vote for me. That's populism. And it's bad. It doesn't matter who's doing it. It's bad. And we should, yeah. as Americans, understand that and not fall for it. Not fall for this idea that we I should agree. burn it all down and destroy everything because the other side is so evil. Okay, well, you know what we've reached. Again, I, have, I, have, I think we've reached I have, a point. I have four years to look at how we governed, and I'm comfortable with well, it. We have a point where Tim, totally... but he's not. He's not comfortable with it. He's 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 white knuckling it so he can survive in politics, and that was his choice to make. He had a choice. He could either stand on principle and take a stand against Donald Trump, especially after January 6th. And he chose a political career and this is what comes with it. He has to stuff down his bed. He has to stuff down his instincts. I know this guy knows that Tim is right. I know he knows like on, on some level, he knows he probably consciously knows that Tim is right. And he has to, and he has to do what he has to do to survive in DC as a, as a member of the current Republican party. If he, if he wanted to, he could declare it as an independent, but he would be primaried immediately. He would lose that primary. He would no longer have a seat in Congress and he doesn't want to do that. And so he has to, he has to pretend like what Tim is saying is not true, but he knows it's true. Tim, where Tim Don't nods and says, Dan, do the right thing. Where Tim nods and says, I agree, it feels like a good <laughs> moment to end this actually rather civilized debate, and I appreciate the respectful way you've gone about it. <laughs> I was going to say, well, was it? I don't know if that, okay. Thank you both very much. That was the perfect, look at that, look at his face. Actually, rather civilized debate, and I appreciate the respectful way. <laughs> like, well, I don't know. Where you've gone about it. Thank you both very much indeed. Oh, that did not disappoint. That was fantastic. God, that was so good.